The Sea Dragons of Ariar. What are they? Who are they? And what makes them sacred among the Maker's creatures? What's up Featherheads, and welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at the Sea Dragons, and talking a bit about them as a species, and as characters of the Wingfeather Saga. Before we get into this video, I'd like to apologize for the months of silence on my channel. Recently I've been dealing with some really harsh medical issues that have pretty much stopped me from making any videos whatsoever, and in general my life has been pretty busy all by itself. But here I am, alive and well, ready to get back to it. Expect more Wingfeather content coming to my channel shortly. But without further ado, let's get on to the video. The Sea Dragons are a noble race of sentient creatures that have inhabited the Dark Sea of Darkness since the end of the first epoch, though they weren't always confined to the water. At one point, they were said to have lived in great mountains and had wings capable of flight. For more information and lore about the dragons before they diminished into the sea, go check out my previous video, which I'll link above. The sea dragons are by far some of the largest creatures in Ariar, having sometimes been compared to mountains. The dragons are long and serpent-like and very brightly colored, though it is hinted at that these colors may grow dimmer with age, as we see with Jurgen. Their tremendous size and unmatched power make the adults terrible foes, but the young dragons are much weaker. They're weak enough, in fact, that throughout the epochs they have been hunted and slain by human sailors, and individual parts of them such as the whiskers, scales, and meat were sold for large amounts of money. It was a despicable business, and eventually it was banned altogether. So, other than their tremendous size and strength, what other powers do the sea dragons hold? In the beginning of the Wingfeather Saga, they are mostly described as just being large sea serpents, but it quickly becomes clear that there's much more to these creatures than what meets the eye. The first thing we see is their almost magical singing during the Dragon Day Festival in Glipwood. This brings the listeners to do and feel things that they wouldn't normally, and the music seems to magnify their emotions. It also sparks a long-forgotten memory in Lily, causing her to sing what scholars in Ariar believe to be Jurgen's tune, which her mother likely sang to her as a baby. But when the song ends and the dragons are silenced, Lily can't remember the words anymore. Whether the music of the dragons is magical or just exceedingly beautiful, we can't be entirely certain, but seeing as how music and song have a lot of magical power in Ariar, I wouldn't be surprised. Another ability of the dragons that could be mistaken for magic is their extremely keen senses. The dragons claim to be able to smell certain screen individuals that are living on land all the way from their home in the Dark Sea of Darkness, and thus they can track their location. In addition, they can sense when someone enters the waters and have used this trait to catch dragon ears in the past. Their sight, above and below water, also seems to be very long-ranged. Aside from magic music and keen senses, the dragon's strength and power is unlike anything Ariar has ever seen. They possess the ability to grind through earth and rock, to cleave land from land, and burrow into deep caverns. Perhaps the greatest example of this can be seen in the legend of the Sunken Mountains, when Jurgen burrows through miles and miles of stone and ore in an attempt to find the healing stones which the Maker buried deeper than the earth. For the full story, go check out my previous video. But aside from their senses, magical qualities, and brute strength, what makes the sea dragons such sacred creatures in the eyes of the Maker? I think the best answer is simply that they are sentient. They have souls and names and families, and some of these families are older than old. Whether or not the dragons are immortal is unclear, but Jurgen, the greatest and oldest of them all, was possibly one of the first dragons ever created by the Maker, and is still alive during the events of the Wingfeather Saga. By the end of the first epoch, Jurgen had already created his kingdom in the mountains, and had sunk in them too, and thousands of years have since followed those events. So are they immortal, or do they just live a really long time? It's unclear, but if they are immortal, it would give them a whole other level of sacredness among the mortal races of Ariar. But that's just my speculation. But I think that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this episode of my Creatures of Ariar series, and learned something new along the way. If you'd like to see more, leave a like or a comment down below, and let me know what you'd like to see next. Again, I apologize for the months of absence on my channel. Thank you all for your patience and support. Until next time, this is Swap Theorist, signing out. Ciao!